Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Heroes of the Shire. Heroes of the Shire is brought to you by Senior Games. It's for one to six players, ages 13 and up, and games generally run 30 to 180 minutes. Heroes of the Shire is a turn-based combat game where players cast spells, abilities, and learn combos to defeat their enemies. With 20 plus characters, 12 bosses, and over 800 spells and abilities, new two games will ever be the same. With three different boxes full of content, I have the Fire and Ice version, but also go check out the Kickstarter page where you'll find out more info on the Earth and Water as well as the Collector's Edition. So in this game, you will embody heroes with unique skills and abilities to battle it out in a scenario or the arena. Beating of drums, the sounding of horns, and the clashing of metal beckons you to the games. The thrill of the arena surges through your veins. The heroes of the Shire were born for conflict. The focus of their existence is to test themselves against each other. Some heroes band together through scenarios, sharing a common interest in overpowering even the strongest of foes, conjuring magic, honing their battle skills, and transforming into more formidable versions of themselves. The heroes will stop at nothing to defeat the common foe or simply overpower each other. So, there are really two types of games here. You have the scenario mode, which I will be focusing on as it is my preferred game mode for sure, and you have the arena mode. In the scenario or cooperative mode, you will travel through a themed scenario defeating bosses and trash mobs via an adventure tile system. One player though is selected to take on the role of uprooting these heroes and will play as each enemy and boss unit throughout the game, bringing an end to the heroes and their deeds. Each scenario offers around three to four hours of playtime and includes a save game sheet so you can easily remember where you left off. And in the arena mode, this is pretty straightforward really, as it is a player versus player. You will battle it out in the arena to become victorious. You will play team versus team, free for all, or simply just one versus one. So the heroes included in my prototype are the hunter, the paladin, the warlock, and the warrior. And these boards, some fantastic player boards, you have some really nice info on the back outlining the character and so forth, some nice artwork as well. But on the other side, you'll find all your different abilities. You have your standard stats that you would expect, like strength, intelligence, agility, defense, and your health. Health is represented by dice, and speaking of dice, almost everything you're doing in this game is using dice, but not for rolling. There is an occasional rolling of dice here and there, but in general, you're using dice to show when your different abilities or spells cool down. And as you use them, you'll see in the bottom left corner, or sorry, bottom right corner, is that cool down value that you have to follow in order to be able to use that ability or spell again. And you have different levels. You have support and you have battle, right? So, or attack. And the thing is, is that these are your base skills, and you could just play with this board, which is really nice, but they have advanced skills, and you'll take on this new board specific to your character where you have different trees of abilities, and much like other games that you've played before, you have to follow the tree down the path in order to acquire the skill and the next skill and so forth. But you have different options here and different abilities, and as you play the scenario, you're gonna be leveling up and adding more and more skills and so forth. However, in that arena mode, you'll be able to start off with like a level five where you can have one row complete if you want or one column complete and you can mix and match as you so see fit. But the thing is, is that you get obviously the most power out of having one full column. So lots of options here for the characters and all the characters have their own unique abilities as well. And on the right of your board are your buffs. So some temporary buffs as well as permanent ones will be placed in these categories of these areas of your board. Now the thing about the temporary one is that maybe you got a spell to give you a plus three in strength or something. You'll place that token in the far right of the column and every round it's gonna tick down until it finally expires. But again, the permanent ones are just going to stay there giving you abilities throughout the course of the game. Now, you also have effects that can happen. Things like poison that you'd expect. You can be stunned, all kinds of different things. So those are the basics of your board. And if you're playing the scenario, which I like, 
you can get equipment. So you've got an equipment board for that and all the different characters have various cards that they can use as well. So like for the hunter, she has all kinds of animal friends that can come to her aid and she can use in battle and so forth. And so all these different abilities that you have, be it for support or attack, all the different spells are gonna be wide and varied obviously. And there's a ton of icons that are associated with them, but you really only need to pay attention to the ones for your character. And there's a handy reference card and it really does aid throughout the course of the game, but you really only need to tell folks what you're doing based on that ability or skill. And you're only doing one thing on your turn, unless one of those spells allows you to tap into a second one and so forth. There's lots of options that can happen and how you combo as well. Lots of some really interesting things there for sure. But the really nice thing is that you're not just specifically relying on dice rolls in order to activate these abilities. You just activate them and then you have to wait for them to cool down in order to use them again. Being very mindful about how long it takes to cool down because you might need them in the next battle. So when and how you use those abilities is key specifically for these scenarios and how you work together with your fellow players. So those are really nice features for sure. And when you do go into battle, it's really just a matter of adding up the number of defense versus the number of attack and deducting health. No matter who you're fighting, what you're doing, it's really that basic. It, is, it makes for a very quick gameplay and streamlined how you move through these different adventures. Now, as you'd expect, there's a whole set of enemies and monsters and bosses that you have to deal with. The bosses all have character sheets much like the players do. Of course, one person at the table will be taking on the role of these awesome, terrible baddies. So you have to be mindful of those, but all their minions, so to say, these trash mobs, are a set of cards that they'll be using as well. So you'll set those up based on the scenario that you're playing. In this case, we have the fire scenario, and there's three levels to it, basically, as you move through the different areas. You're gonna start in the Shire and move out from there. And there's a couple other things that you'll be using in the scenarios that you don't get with the arena modes. You'll have treasure and loot cards, and you'll also have these action cards that you're gonna be interacting with. Now, you're gonna be starting at level one. So how do I level up? Well, obviously, defeating a boss is a way to do that. You might encounter a power cube, which will allow you to level up in a loot item, or you might have a level up option in these action cards as you play through them. So those really those are the three basic ways. And as you level up, you're gonna get a new cube to add to a skill and so forth in your skill tree as you become a master in those different areas. So it really is an evolving of your character for sure. It's very different for the arena. Again, you're gonna start like at a level five, so you can just immediately get a bunch of skills and so forth. So anyway, the adventuring is definitely about leveling up and experiencing the character progression. And so, no matter what scenario that you're playing, your main goal is to always defeat three bosses. Now, depending on the area that you're in, they're all very thematic to the area. In this case, we have the fire scenario set up and each of the areas have a different boss. So you're gonna be encountering like the dragon or the elemental, things like that, as you move through these dungeons. So the other thing though, is that as you flip over tiles and move through, there's several icons to be aware of. You've got the treasure icon, which is really just getting loot from an area. You have the monster icon, which may or may not have a number above it. If there is, you'll draw that many cards or the enemy player at the table will draw that many cards from the trash mob deck. And if there is no number, then it's just a single card, but you're gonna have to encounter those monsters and deal with them and squash them in order to move on. And then you have the most important icon, which is two swords crossed. You're gonna encounter this one the most. This is the action icon. Now I'm not gonna spoil too many of these actions. I'll show you a couple here. One is sneak attack. So the enemy player will draw a card and will read from it and then give you the options, but not read the outcome until you pick the path that you're going to do. But in this case, the sneak attack, you see enemies up ahead and you have to choose what you're gonna do. I really like this kind of choose your own adventure kind of aspect to the game, really well done. And I like that there's lots of different types of action cards that can come up. So anyway, that's a really nice aspect to this scenario based game. And then finally, obviously, you're gonna be encountering the boss in this level. Also, there's a locked icon that you may encounter, which bosses may drop keys. So you have to get keys in order to move through certain areas and so forth. So 
keep that in mind as you're adventuring. You need to really kind of uncover and discover pretty much the whole area as you try to buff yourself up before you get to the bosses and so forth. But that boss, again, he has his own player board. The enemy player at the table will take that. It's much like the character boards. All kinds of skills and abilities. You're gonna be using dice for cooldown. You have cards, all that kind of stuff. But again, these boss level creatures are super powerful, high level. And depending on the player count will determine their ability or their difficulty level, I should say. It'll be like easy for like a two player game, but it, it scales up greatly for more players for sure, which adds a lot of pressure to the game, which I like a lot. And also you don't have to finish the scenario in one sitting. There is this handy card for keeping track of where you are in the adventure so you can easily slide it in and set up quickly for the next time you get together and play. So I like that as well. So the scenarios are vast and in the current rule book, you see it just a handful, but I suspect there's gonna to be tons more and different ways to play for sure. But the scenarios is definitely the aspect of the game that I like the most. And also the fact that how all the abilities and skills work really, really well done. But as you adventure and work together, I like cooperative games. So that is definitely what this scenario is all about. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, there are so many different abilities or spells for all these different characters. We just couldn't deep dive into it here. But just know that as you experience this game, there's like 20 plus characters. So much to learn and see in all the different types of characters and how they play. Lots of neat things here. And even how you expand their skill tree throughout the course of the game and the different scenarios. Really, really well done there. And I like, again, those action cards for that little bit of that choose your own adventure feel to it. And the fact that you have one player playing all the enemies. So you get some wide and varied play for sure versus the scenario or the PVP. If you like either of those, you get that in a dungeon crawl for sure. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, We'll see you at the table.